What is going on, everybody? Welcome into another edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up here on this gorgeous Thursday, July 6, 2023. As always, I am your humble correspondent, Michael Tanner, coming to you from an undisclosed location here in Dallas, Texas. Rocking a solo show today. Stu is out on assignment, so we wish him well. Um, we will see him back here for the Monday show. Remember, tomorrow is the weekly recap. Uh, never fear, though. We do have a pretty great show lined up today. We've, we've got a, a lot of stories. I don't know how in-depth I'll cover all of them. Um, but first up on the menu, this is the one I will probably cover the most. Solar panels are more carbon intensive than experts admit. In something that we've been preaching for years. I'm excited to dive into some of the numbers here. And then we might lightly touch, and we've got Bolivia's economic upheaval threatens renewable energy development. Sounds like something we should cover with Stu. And then I just had to throw this in here. We won't cover, but nuclear diesel, a game changer. So if you if you tuned in to hear Stu's thoughts on nuclear, we will make sure to cover nuclear diesel next week. That seems insane. Um, I'll finish by talking a little bit about what happened with oil prices. We are currently trading about $71.90, um, which is really catching up um, with WTI having the day off. Um, yesterday, we did see the API come out and drop their um, estimates of what tomorrow we'll see or as you listen to this on Thursday, what you'll see from, from the EIA in terms of crude oil storage reserves. And then we did see um, a little uh, oil field services, m and Patterson UTI buying um, Altera drill bits. I'll dive into why I think it's a pretty wildly expensive price, but we'll uh, we'll cover that when we get to it. Um, but first, guys, remember all of the stories I'm about to talk about, courtesy world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all of your um, oil and gas and energy news. Stu does a great job of curating that website, making sure it's up to speed. Um, team does a great job of making sure it's up to speed as well. So shout out to them. Dashboard.energynewsbeat.com. Again, the best place um, for all your data, energy news combo. Get it while you still can. We are hard at work trying to throw that behind a paywall. So uh, uh, get it while you still can. Um, let's start with this sh- solar panel one. I-, I think, you know, the title of the article, solar panels are more carbon intensive than experts admit. Um, this is um, by CP Column and Lee Booth um, in collaboration with the website, The Blind Spot. You can check it out, energynewsbeat.com. But really what this is 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 talking about is you know information that was unearthed by the Environmental Progress Organization. So basically what this is all saying is that what you're hearing about the carbon intensity of photovoltaic, which whenever you hear the words photovoltaic, Think solar. It's a fancy way of saying solar. Um, it, 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 and, and really solar PV is what you should call it because there are other types of, of, of solar energy. Um, but to give you an idea, there's this guy out of Italy who's been doing some interesting work who tells you that the IEA is fudging the numbers a little bit. So to give you an idea, remember, we've got the IPCC. What is the IPCC? So the IPCC is... The international, well, it's, I don't actually know the terminology. Let me look this up. It's the, it's, it's the climate change organization. Yes. The intergovernmental, intergovernmental panel on climate change. So this is the kind of the all seeing eye of climate change. They're the ones every year that put out um, their, here's what's going to happen. We're all going to die because of climate change, which they actually don't. It's interesting. If you listen to guys like Michael Schellenberger, you listen to guys like Bjorn Lomberg, they'll tell you if you actually read the IPCC reports, the inter-panel, um, even their intergovernmental panel on climate change, um, you would see that they're not actually as doom and gloom as maybe someone like AOC would like to make them out. But what they come out and say, the ICCP claims that solar PV, solar energy, is basically... Um, consuming 48 or emitting 48 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. And this Italian researcher, Enrico Mariatti, who's drinking wine, eating pasta, and figuring that this number, based on his research, is a little bit closer to 600 to, to 1,200 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour, If that is true, to give you an idea, natural gas with carbon capture is around 50, and without carbon capture, it's 400 to 500. So even without carbon capture, natural gas beats what solar may or may not be. Now, again, we have to trust this Enrico Mariachi guy. Do we trust him? So let's come down. Let's come down. 
um, and take a look at what he's got going on here. So what he's saying, he first noted something wasn't quite right with these photovoltaic assessments about two years ago. He was pre- preparing for an online renewables uh, debate with Nicola Armadi, a research director at the Italian Research Council. Being a data junkie, he decided to pour over the source material and try to figure out why. What he discovered unnerved him. The data didn't reconcile. Remember, guys, he holds a degree in geopolitics and global security, which, while unrelated to the field, equipped him with enough quantitative skills to ensure that he can recognize the difference between good and bad data. That's key. I was having this debate at work today. The model is only as good as the data going into it. The website is only as good as the data going into it. People want to see a report. Well, the report's made of numbers. Well, the number's right. No. Ah, well. Your report sucks then. So I like what he, I, this is good to see. There's a, there's a skill and, and, and having enough, what, what they would call quantitative skills to understand the difference between good data, bad data, how you get to good data, how you don't get to good data. I think this is absolutely critical. His quote is, the data showed much more, uh, showed how much sol- solar photaic systems I used in terms of raw materials, silicone, aluminum, copper, glass, steel, and silver. Then I saw the carbon footprint. It just seemed way too small. According to the findings, um, his findings, the carbon intensity of these solar panels manufactured in China and installed in European countries um, like Italy was likely off by an order of magnitude. His initial back of the envelope calculation put it between 170 and 200 um, grams of uh, of carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour as opposed to the official estimates. Um, But then he upped those as he moved on. But I mean, to give you guys an idea, people are coming to the conclusion that solar is not better for the environment than natural gas, specifically with carbon capture. I mean, you talk about 50 grams of carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour. That's pretty good. That's good. That's going to not do climate change or, you know, I'm again, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but if you're telling me 40 is photovoltaic, if that's what the IPCC is telling us, yeah, because ICPC is saying 48. So you're saying with carbon capture, it's the same? Hmm, interesting. I love how they rounded up to 50. They can't quite say it's the same. They got to say solar's 48, uh, natural gas, 50. You know, we see uh, the IPCC, the same data analysts, they share data analysts with the IEA. So we know you're getting the best quality data analysis and whatever. Um, so very interesting, you guys. Solar panels, they're more carbon intensive um, than we thought. Um, again, in a move nobody expected. Um, we've got Bolivia economic upheaval threatens renewable energy development. I don't really care. Um, as we just saw in the last article, who cares? Um, you know, this probably means, I mean, it's not good for them as Stu would say, um, I'm probably being a little bit too coy, but, um, to give you guys an idea, they've got huge amounts of lithium reserves. That's really what it comes down to. When we talk about renewable energy development, we're not talking about they're throwing up wind farms. It's talking about they, we need to extract minerals from them. So the rest of the world can go EV. That's the sad part about it. It's EV for me and not for you. Clean energy for me, but not for thee. It really is. Who cares about Bolivia? They've got a lot of lithium. It's insane. And now we're going to be shoving nuclear diesel in our cars. We're going to have to cover this with Stoogie Bags. Nuclear diesel? You will never get me to put something in my car that says nuclear diesel. I'm sorry. You're going to have to convince me otherwise. You're going to have to do a lot of tests before I start throwing nuclear diesel in my car. That's all I have to say about that. The rest of this news we'll cover um, on Sunday night with Stu. Get that to you out Monday morning ASAP. From a finance perspective, guys, we did see oil prices rise um, to about seventy-one ninety. Again, we did, we had the markets close for July fourth. So really, what we're seeing is a catch up to Brent. Um, really backed by two things. We saw the a, the I, the API come out today, forecast about a four point four million barrel draw. The I the EIA will confirm that. Um, um, to confirm or deny that tomorrow. Um, you know, we also did see Saudi Arabia come out today, um, extend their voluntary cuts, um, which extend their lollipop as, as they called it, um, of 1 million barrels per day. They extended that into August, Russia and Algeria also are lowering their August output, um, and export volumes, which is, is critical at this time by about 500,000 and 20,000 barrels respectively. So at least I choose 20,000 barrels. Hey, we'll take it. 20,000 barrels a day is 20,000 barrels a day, you know? Someone, I, I'd love to have 20,000 barrels a day flowing into, uh, flowing into my tanks. I don't, though, unfortunately. But, uh, um, 
you know, I think what you're seeing on, on, on the oil side is, is, is prices are going to continue to be stabilized as long as keep cutting. The question is how much is Saudi Arabia willing to cut? Um, they're going to be the driver of this 20,000 barrels from Algeria. Ain't going to do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it ain't going to do it. It's going to take a little bit more, um, a little bit more help. Um, natural gas price is $2.66. You know, don't get, don't let natural gas fool you. It loves to be low. Don't don't pull the mistake that I did getting sucked into being a bull now. 260, it's back in the right direction. Um, you know, we'll see um, natural gas inventories drop on Friday. Um, so we'll, we'll get a little better of an idea there. Um, you know, we did see a little bit of an oil field services M&A. Um, Patterson UTI, uh, remember they last week bought next tier oil field services. They actually merged with them to form about a... $5.4 billion firm, but Patterson UTI is going to be bigger than them. They go out and go ahead and swoop up Ulterra Drilling Technologies. Um, if, you, if, if you're in the patch, you know them as just um, the bit people. Um, they actually gave me at one point a couple months ago, or like six months ago, I got free tickets from them um, to go see uh, uh, Rangers. So I texted I texted my boss today and I, and I said, are we still getting, uh, um, I almost, um, I texted him, I was like, are we still getting tickets to the next, uh, are we still getting Rangers tickets? Um, he didn't know. Um, so hopefully they still keep their suite um, here in Arlington. That would be dope. You know, how to keep and keep the tickets flowing to me. I'm down. Um, but they swooped them up um, $370 million in cash and $34.9 million uh, Patterson UTI shares. Kind of insane. That's like a $700 million valuation of a, you know, basically $180 million worth of EBITDA. That's, a, that's like a three, four multiple. It's a little high. A little high for a bit company. A little bit. I get their day. I get their doing. You know, I get to do other stuff. You know, a little high. A little high. Blackstone, who's the you know controlling entity of of what was Altera, they got a good deal on this. Got a good deal on this. They got some cash and they got some shares. They got a little bit of a little bit of upside and they got a little bit of uh, sugar. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they use that for. But ah, a little bit rich for my blood. A little bit rich for my blood. But um. As long as they keep them tickets flowing my way, I don't care. Again, it all comes down to how I feel. Don't mind you what the market feels. It's how I feel. Um, I think that's about it, guys. I don't have anything else on my desk. Um, you can always email us, questions at energynewsbeat.com. But for Stuart Turley and Michael Tanner, folks, um, we'll see you tomorrow on the weekly recap, and then we'll see you Sunday to kick the week off. Have a great one. Thank <laughs> you.